Good morning, everyone. Hi, it's good to be here. I'm drinking a big cup of coffee today. Actually, I dropped my daughter off at the airport this morning. She, the flight got changed two different times, but we finally worked it out, and she went. She's going home to California today after a big weekend of celebrating. Are you ready? The wedding that wasn't. <laughs> My daughter Casey was supposed to get married this past weekend and of course because of COVID we've delayed that for a year. However, it was still super fun. We still celebrated and um, it was so beautiful up north. Oh my gosh, the fall colors. They were totally peaked, totally beautiful and we all came together as a family and we had so much fun. So we did some golfing. Woohoo! It's beautiful on the course. Great day. No wind. You couldn't even ask for a better day. I could have asked for a better game, but that's okay. It was still fun. Good morning. Hello. Oh, wow. We have lots of people joining us. Welcome. It's so good to see you here. We're going to make some beautiful fall birthday cards. Aren't these gorgeous? So beautiful. And pretty colors. I'll be talking about these in just a second. I do have a card to share that I got in my mailbox. This beautiful card is from, a, from one of my longtime customers. She's been a customer since 2013. She used her paper pumpkin kit. So this is from my dear friend and customer, Lynn Washer from Georgia. Isn't it pretty? I showed my daughter this card this weekend and she's like, oh my gosh, mom, that, that looks like a, a fair ribbon. <laughs> my girls always notice everything related to ribbons because they were in 4-H and so that has a lot of meaning for everybody in this family. But it's a beautiful card. See, you, it's so much fun to have those paper pumpkin kits on hand because you can either choose to do up all the cards at once or create cards as you need them for whatever occasion you desire. And there's so many ideas out there on the internet. I don't even try to compete. I just get the kit, come up with a couple of alternatives, throw them out there, and away we go. But if you ever need help finding ideas for your paper pumpkin kit, you can just Google it. Type in Stampin' Up! Paper Pumpkin Kit, September 2020, and boom, you're going to get a gazillion ideas. All right. Let's see. I think... Do I have it? Oh, well, let's see. I think what I'm going to do, yes, I'm going to switch the camera down and we're just going to go ahead and get started. I think that was all I had to share today. So let me go ahead and we'll get going. So for those of you that have not attended many Facebook Lives with Kate Kaltoff at Stamping to Share, and this is your first one, I want to let you know a little bit about the routine. We always make two cards exactly the same or close to exactly the same, and then I give them away. Um, the next time that I do a Facebook Live. So the giveaway this time is going to be this fabulous Rococo Rose ribbon. And it has kind of a gold center with the Rococo Rose on the outside. And it's actually what I'm using on the card that we're making today. It looks great with fall colors. So it's a perfect set of ribbon for this time of year. So I'll give away two yards to each of our winners. To get into the drawing, it's so easy. All you have to do is comment or share the, the video on your timeline or in a Stampin' Up! or uh, a creative group of whatever that you're involved with. And uh, sometimes that brings me new customers. And so for that, I truly appreciate you and all of the ways you uh, help my business grow through Stampin' Up! and through these Facebook Lives. So I truly appreciate it. The card we're making looks like this. We're using the hand-drawn bloom stamp set. Isn't that pretty? Of course, it's the paper that really makes it rock. I'll be sharing more information about that in a second. And then this is the inside panel so that you can personalize a birthday message in each of these cards. So, I actually just created this card um, using some paper that I had that is from the Artistry Blooms Designer Series Paper Pack. As you might know, Stampin' Up! is having a paper sale right now. So this particular pack of paper is 15% off during the month of October. 
and it's beautiful. At first when I picked up the pack, I was like, ooh, there's a, there's a lot I could do with this because I love bright colors, so I was pretty excited. And you might notice there's a lot of coordinating colors that goes with this. I won't even try to name them all, but you can look them up in our Stampin' Up! catalog. And then, funny thing is, after I created this card, I realized that the colors I picked, what? They're not even on this list, which is kind of funny. So, the colors I picked, well, at least to create the base of the card, I used Cajun Craze as the card base, and then I used um, this lovely color here, which I use a lot. It's Early Espresso. And then we have uh, Very Vanilla, which I don't even know if that's actually in the color palette for this particular designer series paper, but because of the way I'm using this ombre sheet here, it worked perfectly. And then I just chose a couple of colors out of the ombre sheet that I used. So I've got Rich Razzleberry here and then uh, Mango Melody. So a really um, pretty card that doesn't exactly use the recommended colors for the artistry blooms, but that's okay because we're taking what could be perceived as a summer pack of paper and turning it into fall card making, which is, you know, awesome to get a little more versatility out of what we have in our stamp room. The stamp set looks like this. It's called Hand Drawn Blooms, and it, it can be purchased as a bundle. So you have the beautiful dies that come with it. And then also you might notice that there's a lot of sentiments, and they all have a bit of a curve to them, and that's so that they can fit into the die perfectly. So you'll be seeing how I do that in just a minute. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is work on stamping. So let me grab this out. I have, because the first thing we want to do is stamp our sentiment, our wishing you a happy birthday sentiment. And I have prepared a few of these, but I want to show you the process of getting to this point. So first of all, you take a scrap of very vanilla paper. I don't know how big this is. It's just a scrap. I just pulled it out of my drawer because I just decided it would be about the size that would fit. Then you're going to take the die that looks like this, that has this particular word cut out in, and just throw it over the top, run it through your stamp and cut emboss machine or whatever die cutting machine that you might have. And when you pull it out, and let me grab some something dark here so you can see this, you're going to get something that will look a little like this. And, and this is not what we want to work with. It needs to be trimmed up. So I'm going to grab my scissors and we're going to do a little trimming on this. And it's really easy to trim this, you guys. Don't let this um, intimidate you. So you just cut along this banner shape just like so with your scissors. See, that's, that's all you need to do. And you can do the same thing up here. Just trim along the top of this banner shape. and you have something that looks like that. Then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna trim this inside portion out. So what I just showed you, that's super easy. That was the easy part. The inside part is a little more tricky. So I'm gonna hold this up to the camera just to show you something. Let me poke this little chat out of here. There we go. So the part that we want to do is we want the flag on the upper left uh, we want this flag to go to the left and the lower flag to go to the right. So that's how you know you have it set up right. So then what we want to do is we want to trim this excess off here and then we want to trim this whole middle section off, but we'd still want it to have some stability. So what I recommend doing is just, you're going to cut off this section, cut off through the flag, but you're going to stop here because all of this kind of holds those two flags together. That'll allow you to get a good stamped image. And then we're gonna cut off this section here. So now that I've shown you what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. So I'm just gonna, again, it's, it's just kind of knowing where to uh, begin. 
So now we have this, this one is kind of loose and ready to go. Then you're gonna kind of, uh, it is a little hard. Sometimes you have to kind of bend it around a little bit, but then just get your scissors in here and trim off that next section. So there we have our inside piece trimmed off and then just trim this uh, end panel off by going like that and we have it done. So that's what it looks like when it's all trimmed up and then it's ready to be stamped on. So let me grab my panels here. I know you can't see them, but I'm gonna fix that in a second. I just have to get my, my things ready. All right, so here is our early espresso. And it looks like I do need to run across the room and grab another block because I forgot to pull out the birthday stuff. So let me grab that out. See, I make these cards in advance and then, and then I try to set up day of and look at me, I'm still not quite ready. So I'll be back with a block. which doesn't take long since it's only three steps away. So we're gonna um, put this on here and it says, whoops, I got the, hold on. We'll get this all right. There we go. So it says, wishing you a happy birthday. So you're gonna ink it up in early espresso. Then so that you can see what I'm doing and so that I can see what I'm doing, I'm just gonna take a silicone craft sheet here and put this down and that way it gives me a good view of where I want to stamp this. So there we go, wishing you a happy birthday. Perfect. Do the same thing over here. There it is, and it's so cute, I just love it. And as long as I've got this out, I'm gonna stamp, I'll probably make up a third card too and give it to one of my downline members. So let me just stamp this one as well. Okay, there we go. So we have them all ready. That was easy, wasn't it? So nice and quick. It was just a little tricky with the cutting, but even that wasn't too bad. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about measurements and what we need to do next. Um, just a little more stamping. So I, I think I shared with you the papers. There's a lot of ombre papers, so just go ahead and when you grab that Artisan Blooms Designer Series paper, just pick an um, a pattern that you like. This is from two different types of patterns. As you can see, one has the blue and green background and the other one is more of a purple and pink background. Um, this is the melon or the mango melody look up here and kind of a flirty flamingo down here. This one has sort of the rich razzleberry at the bottom and then it's trending off into a little bit lighter uh, pink and a little bit of orange up here. So these are three and three-fourths by five inches. That's the size that I cut them to. Then what you're going to do is you're going to ink up this beautiful, beautiful hand-drawn bloom stamp. And I'm just gonna take my early espresso, ink that all up, and we're stamping on our designer series paper, one of my favorite things to do. So just, just put that in like so, just center it in, and there it is. Then we're gonna do the same thing over here. And it's just so beautiful. And there it is. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it on so many different colors. All right, then we're going to take the bottom portion and I always think it sort of looks a little bit like half a haystack. I don't know, it just reminds me of that. So we're gonna take this bit and we're gonna just stamp that in at the bottom. And we'll do the same thing over here. Looks great. So you don't have to be real particular about how this looks because just about whatever you do is gonna look great. All right, so the stamping for this card is now done. So now we're gonna do a little layering. So I've got some early espresso panels here, and these are four by five and a quarter. Simple measurements. This is not that hard of a card to recreate. As you know, all of my cards are pretty simple. Pretty easy to recreate, if I say so myself. 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down because it gives me a little wiggle room. So we are just going to put glue all the way around. And we're going to flip it over and we're going to set it over here onto this early espresso panel and then you just wiggle it into place until it looks just nice and even and just right to you. Then we're going to do the same thing for this panel. And it's so pretty. I mean, it's hard to know which side to use. I thought this side, though, was probably a little busy, so I went with the uh, less patterns so that the blooms would show up really well. So there we are. Beautiful. All right, then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do our little bit of a ribbon wrap. So for those of you that were watching earlier in the video broadcast here, you know that this is going to be my giveaway. So when you comment or share on this post, hold on, I gotta grab the right scissors here, you will be in the drawing for two yards of this ribbon. I'll give away uh, both cards on Thursday. So that will be fun. So then what you're doing is you're just cutting a bit of ribbon, just a little bit longer here than your card size. And you're just gonna kind of look for a little triangle there and then you're gonna turn it over and you are going to use some scotch tape to attach that. Or however you like to attach your ribbon, you just go ahead and do that. I'm a little bit of a fan of scotch tape, I wonder why. 3M just happens to be here in Minnesota. So, so we grew up loving scotch tape. And now, of course, it's, you know, post-it notes and everything else that's fun. In fact, I have to share with you something. This might be of more interest to demonstrators. But I often have demonstrators ask me, how do you get your circles to stay? Because they think that looks so cool. Ready? Scotch tape. Yes, this is um, the removable tape. So pretty, pretty easy. I'll show you the back side. It's not quite as pretty. But I just tape all the circles together with removable tape. And then, because it's just like post-it notes, you can just reuse these little pieces over and over and over and over. So this, this might last me 10 years. All right, so back to card making. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one around. I just feel like I have to share because I have so many downline and so many demonstrators who watch these Facebook Lives that every once in a while I just have to share those little tidbits. There we go. So our last little um, wrap and then we're going to do our tie-on. So to do a tie-on, again, you're just going to measure out a little bit longer. The, you know, It's going to be about the same size as what you did before. Then to get kind of a flat knot on top, I'll share with you how I do this because everybody always asks me. So I'm putting the ribbon in like this. And then when I put it on, it's sort of like tying your shoe, but put your thumb underneath. So you can see I've sort of got this started like so. Take your thumb, put it underneath, and flip it all the way around. And when you do that magically you get sort of, of course now that I'm doing it on camera it's not wanting to cooperate as well but you get this sort of a flat knot just like that so we'll, we'll try it one more time with this side put your ribbon on sort of like you start tying your shoe but then you put your thumb underneath and flip that all around and you get a really nice kind of flat top to your tie-on, which I like. There we go. All right, then you're just gonna trim that so that you get a cute little, something that looks nice and finished. Do the same thing here. And I'm not trimming off too much, so I did, I did measure out just about the right amount. In fact, this one. I need to do a little bit better job trimming. Hold on. Got to be perfect for whoever wins. There we go. Oh, they're so cute. All right. 
So what is next? Well, we are of course going to finish out the inside. So I was wrong, there's still a little stamping to do. So let me grab my, my pieces of paper here. This is our inside panel. I'm gonna grab a sheet of, just a sheet of scrap paper. This is very vanilla. I cut it at four to five and a quarter. And we're gonna take that really pretty uh, bouquet of hand-drawn blooms. And we're going to stamp it like so. Just so we have a nice little spray at the bottom of our inside panel. You can leave it like that, but of course we're not. We're going to add some designer series paper to coordinate with the outside panels of our cards. So there we go. And then we're going to add our designer series paper. So that is going to be three fourths by four inches. And I just used scraps um, that I had already with my paper pack. And we'll put one of these on one card and one on the other. And again, I'm just going to use a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue to stick that down. So there's one, and here is the second one. So pretty, you guys are leaving me such nice comments, thank you. I usually do go back and reread them all. Sometimes I don't read them while I'm doing an actual Facebook Live just because it distracts me a little bit and uh, then I lose track of what I'm doing. All right, so the card base is going to be Cajun Craze. It's five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. So it's your basic card base. This is, again, Cajun Craze. And we are going to put this one with this one. And this one that has a little bit more rich razzleberry, that's gonna go with this one. So again, we're gonna use multi-purpose liquid glue. We're giving that glue a real workout today. I'm gonna set this here on the front of our card and wiggle it right into place. So easy. And then we can put our inside panel on. And we're going to use stamp and seal to do our inside panel so we don't leave any glue marks. on the very vanilla, which can happen over time. There it is. Don't worry, we're not quite done. I know I haven't put the um, sentiment on. I'm doing that last for those of you that are, oh, she forgot the sentiment. All right, so there's our inside panel for the other card. And these will be my giveaways on Thursday. I'm excited. I'm excited to give these away. Then we're gonna take our multi-purpose liquid glue and go all the way around. Thursday is also a big day for me in that we have um, our Creative Crafters Demonstrator Meeting. We do our demo meetings online so that everybody who's in our group from all around the United States can participate. It's just really fun. So I always look forward to that. Okay, here they are. Oh, so gorgeous. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those sentiment panels that we prepared, and I'm going to take some wonderful dimensionals. Now, I've had a few people who didn't happen to see this early wonder how in the world I have all of the peelies off of my dimensionals. It's easy. All you have to do is peel them off with packing tape, and then you just have to put them into some kind of a covering that they won't stick to. So this happens to be our silicone sheets and I've cut them down so that it fits perfectly, but you won't have to do that. You can use, you know, um, label paper or even the, the paper that, that the dimensionals came on themselves. So here it is, wishing you happy birthday. We're gonna set this in right here and there it is isn't that pretty oh my goodness I just love it so there's one I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one now 
Oh, you guys are liking the flat knot tip. That's good. Thank you. I do try to show things every once in a while just because I know we have new people watching that maybe don't know those tips or maybe you've seen them before but if you haven't if you haven't actually done it yourself in your craft room it's kind of hard to remember so sometimes I know I myself need a couple of reminders to do things a certain way so I'm just helping you remember right <laughs> Here it is, wishing you a happy birthday for the second card that we're doing. Just set that in. And there we are. We have our two cards completed today. This was so much fun to get together with you guys. I really look forward to this. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I try to get a Facebook Live in unless I'm, you know, not able to for some reason. But it's great to be here. Oh, thanks for all the hearts. You guys are awesome. Well, I will let you go. You guys have a wonderful day, and I hope you have fun with that designer series paper sale that we have going on right now because it's a great time to purchase um, various designer series papers that you'll be able to use all year long at a discount. Talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.